Happy Christmas, everyone, and welcome to our uh, stove-related pub quiz. Um, I'm in front of the incredible DG Oval, and I've got some very girly Christmas socks on with no holes in, so that's a real change of pace for me. Get a pen and paper if you're interested, but thank you for joining me. Okay, your first question is a picture round. Do you know what stove that is? That is a clock Blithfield. Okay, number two. This is just the log store. That is an Ecosi. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> Hampton Vista Vista. 500. Yeah. Can I open my Christmas present? Oh, yeah, I've, I've got you a Christmas present. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, well, I'm at a pub, so crisps is a good thing. These are Jeremy Clarkson crisps. <laughs> I get accused of being, I don't, I really hope I don't look like Jeremy Clarkson, but I get accused of being Jeremy Clarkson all too regularly. What? It's more Clarkson related things. This is unbelievable. I have what I can only assume is cow juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and his lager. That's it. Ooh, right. This is unbelievable. Fantastic. Oh, I love my... I, I am a fan of Clarks. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Right, well, sorry. What's my next right, picture? Okay. This next one, I've got... I'm going to show you, I think, three photos, okay? <clears throat> so this is from our video when we turn the stove around. Right. So you've got the back of the stove, you've got the side of the stove, and I'm giving you just a tiny... Hang on. That is exactly the same stove as the last one. No. That's that Vista 500, Vista wide thing. Oh, it is. I, sorry, I've done the same thing, but with a different one. Apologies. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, again, I've gone for a crop of this one. Okay. Chili penguin. Yeah. Okay, now we've gone, I've gone a little bit old school now. Um, so this is a discontinued stove. Clarkson's crisps are quite good. Oh, that's awesome. No, they're for me. They're my Christmas present. I love Christmas. Christmas are like my favourite. Mmm. <laughs> right, hang on. Mmm. Oh. I've got you presents. You've got me nothing. I don't want to leave you too many. I don't want to leave you too many. What are you trying to say? Mmm. Right, this is your next one. This is ancient. Ancient? It's discontinued. The short answer is no. Um, <laughs> do you know any, do you know the brand? I would guess Yotel. No. Um, if it's not, uh, if it's not Yotel, hang on a minute. Is it more so? <laughs> yeah, it's a more so. Is it a name or is it a four-digit number? Ooh. I'm going to give you this because you're struggling. It's a four-digit number. You start with a one, mm -hmm. like triple one eight or something like that. No. One two. No. Three eight or no? I I, I mean I don't know it. it... It's a more so eleven twenty-five. Okay. Next, we're going to do some scenarios. Okay. These were thought of by your father. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Who you've mentioned before is, you know, he's very good at these sorts of things. Okay. Okay. Scenario one. Yes. Can you give me three reasons why my 45,000 BTU boiler stove isn't heating my six radiators properly? <laughs> okay. Um... Heating the six radiators properly. Uh, 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 
Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to say the obvious one straight away of um, uh, bleed your radiators. I'm going to ask the question uh, after how long, because when the if the, if the water if the water in the cylinder is cold, you won't heat your radiators until that's up to temperature. Are your radiators doubles? That, but that's sort of asking a question, answering a question with another question. Yeah, but it, that is, you know, a reason could be if you've got double radiators, you've got the wrong. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Dad. I said things like um, the radiators need bleeding. Um, Which is entirely possible. So, yeah, if, if you were, uh, so that, that's a correct answer. And if, um, but if you're going to bleed them, you make sure the pump's not running. Okay, yes. <laughs> the water cylinder is not yet hot, so you've hit you've lit the stove but everything's cold and so none of the radiators will heat until the cylinder's up to temperature. Yeah, I think that's 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 right and and okay. that's a, a good answer. Um it's the it's just premature in, in looking for heat in those radiators. You've not given it enough time. Have you got double radiators and therefore you've actually got a bigger system than the stove can handle? Okay, that isn't where I would have gone with an answer because I think they would have found heat in these radiators uh, pretty much regardless. Where else would you have gone? Some in inadequacy in the fuel is, uh, you know, a good answer um, because it happens all the time, wet wood or, or whatever. Things uh, are not uh, achieving uh, correct temperature. Uh, then I would have looked at something like maybe the, the pump simply isn't working. Scenario two. I live in a lodge halfway up a cliff and I have a six metre chimney that's one metre clear of my roof. Whenever the wind blows, my room fills with smoke. What should I do? Oh, wow. That's so sorry. Six metre chimney, one metre above the roof, you're halfway up a cliff. Yeah. Not not on a hill, a cliff. It says halfway up a cliff. What would you do? I mean, I know what the problem is. What's the problem? Um, the, 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 the problem is the wind is beating against the, the, the cliff and causing huge pressure mm. above that flue. So it's, it's driving the smoke down the wrong direction. I'm just not sure how I would fix that. I'm going to say I would fit a vidette cow or a H-pot. So it's a horrible question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suggested a vidette cow or a H-pot. Um, and, and those are not things that I would have suggested. Uh, and so it, 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 uh, the, the problem with this is the wind is, is meeting the cliff uh, and it's, uh, the pressure is equalising the, the updraft. And so it's a real conundrum to try and think how on earth you, you make uh, the, the pressure difference happen so that the smoke comes out. First of all, pay very close attention the direction the wind is coming from um, on the occasions where it's giving you real problems. Pressure around the uh, outlet for the chimney is it, just too great and will not allow smoke come out to come out of it. Now you can you can improve that pressure by cutting an air vent into the side of the building so that it faces the, the uh, wind coming towards it and it will start to pressurise the room uh, and that with the updraft will, will, will beat the, uh, the pressure above it. The second thing uh, that I would, uh, I would consider is a, a spinning cow. Uh, what that gives is a low pressure area just above the cow um, to, uh, to just allow this, this, uh, this smoke to do an up and away. Third scenario. I live near the beach. Why does my stove not work very well? 
during spring going into summer. <laughs> so evil. <laughs> oh, these are such evil questions. <laughs> it, I, I remember him teaching me when you're oh. near water. He... <laughs> so you oh. should know this. Oh. You've been taught this. No, I, I, I've just heard it in passing. My father is an expert on draw issues, diagnosis, how to fix problems. So it's typical that you'd ask these questions. Um, <laughs> spring into summer. Yeah, and by the beach. And you're by the beach. This will be the, the change in temperature off the water and the way that that affects air pressure. What was the problem again? It doesn't work very well during spring going into summer. Yeah, I mean, my first answer to that person is stop bloody using your stove in spring going into <laughs> summer. <laughs> is that your final answer? <laughs> um, it's going to have to be because I don't know the real technical answer. I'm going to have to say stop being an idiot. <laughs> Stop using your stove. Stop using your stove. It's nearly summer. That's my answer. <laughs> this is this is a real a real scenario. As seasons change, uh, and you're you're at, uh, you're living in a sort of seaside location or a location near to to water, what what you can find is that um, you, you know as as spring is going into summer. The water is still relatively cold, and because the water's cold, when the warmer air meets it, it drops and produces a sort of downdraft towards your your chimney. The, the problem is the temperature of the water versus the temperature of the out air, outside air, and it's producing downdrafts that simply don't happen at other times of the year, or updrafts for that matter. Fascinating. Does that answer it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for letting me ask a few uh, questions that have um, puzzled me over the years as well. <laughs> right, we're going on to ancient history now. This stove, on the screen now, is known as the Benjamin Franklin stove because it was designed by Benjamin Franklin. But I want to know who is the lesser known person whose design this is actually based upon? I know that the person who did this um, changed the design of the flu because Benjamin Franklin's stove didn't really sell because it didn't draw very well. And so it was redesigned by another American person. Uh, and I don't know the person's name. But then you get all the modern, more modern adaptations with doors, and that because they didn't originally have doors. Um, I don't. Sorry, I, I don't know. Ah! Right, number two. Yeah. There was a big breakthrough in stoves in the 1600s. What was this breakthrough? that change their efficiency or something, or, or their effectiveness. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm going to guess... Hang on a minute, no. The Benjamin Franklin stove obviously was vastly after the 1600s. That didn't have doors. I was going to say doors. It's going to be something in the throat of the flu. The throat of the flu. Yeah, some sort of... Uh, these were open appliances, so it couldn't have like a. Um, oh, I'm going to say it's something to do with. Um, I'm not going to answer it properly. What I'm going to. By the throat. What, what so, so where where the smoke's going up? Yeah. There's going to be some sort of, like. It, oh, it, like a damper. It, yeah, in an open fire, you had like this sort of um, what they call a chair brick, a mm. burr, or you know, it was just a deflect, a deflection of some sort. And I don't know when that was created. But, so that's what you're guessing. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
What name covers an entire range of the first stoves with a flue pipe? I'm going to give you some clues, okay? So, the f hang on, just say that again. The what name covers an entire range of the first stoves with a flue pipe? So, first, so freestanding stoves with a flue pipe. Okay. Your first clue. Yeah. It was the first public heating. First public heating? Okay. It was created in the in 1860-ish. 1860. Yeah. And your final clue, you'd see it in train stations. Pot belly. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. Pot belly stove. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to... I got something right. You got something right. <laughs> now I'm going to show you Mm -hmm. a 10-ish um, second clip from some of your videos and you need to guess what videos. Something that stands out, something that captures you every single time you walk into the room and see those mesmerising flames, then this really has to be very high on your list. There are loads of special stoves out there, but there aren't many that are as refined or as unique as this stove. The Bora Corner. Yeah, well done. Okay, you ready? Next one. The design I was excited for was the double door. This niche in this industry is massively undercatered for. Hunter Herald 5 Slimline. Well done. Oh, I don't know how long this one's for. I hope I didn't give anything away. Okay. Flaming curved glass, isn't it? Oh no. <laughs> Your arch nemesis. Was this a Contura? Was this a, a Dura? Was it a Heta? An Arada? A failed. A failed. That was a Mendip stove. A Mendip stove? Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, the Churchill 5DC. Yeah. Going this round yes. is the technical round. Technical? Yeah. Does this mean, what does that mean? Like, like regulations? Yeah, right. About document J. Okay, number one. You're soon going to review this stove. What size air vent does the park rate aspect 14 require in a house built in Britain in 2009? I don't think that stove has an output of 14 kilowatts. It's called the aspect 14, but I think the output is something around 10, okay. the official output. Um, it might even be like 9.7 or something horrendous. Um, but let's, let's say it's 10 kilowatts. That's 5,500 uh, square millimeters. Number two. According to diagram 30 in the building regulations, when using a solid fuel, wood or coal stove, can a hearth ever stand in front of a combustible wall? Yes, it can go, it can go in front of a, well, no, it can't. It can't go in front of a non-combustible, a, a combustible wall, because if it's a combustible wall, mm. you have to build masonry in front of it. So no, a hearth, you, you're going a hearth no. can never go in front of a combustible wall. Okay. <laughs> What is the maximum number of bends allowed in a flue according to building regulations? Four. When I say bend, I mean there's two offsets. So mm. that you have a bend and then another bend to bring it back to straight. Mm. But that's two bends. Yeah. So you so can have you, that twice. You can have that twice, yeah. Not four offsets, just four actual bends. Last section. Yes. General knowledge. Okay, cool. Okay. Go for it. What is the efficiency rating of a Woodford during 5X? You must be within three. Within three percentage points? Yeah. I'm going, well, if you've got to be within three, I'm going to say 79, because that gives me 76 to 82, <laughs> and I think I'm covered. 
What is the distance to combustibles behind a Deluso R4 Euro that you recently tested? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, if you don't have an insulated flue, regardless of what the stove's distance... Oh no, this is specific to the stove, isn't it? Yeah, it's a It's not a distance from the flue, okay. Um, okay, with, with a single skin flue, it's 300 mil. With an insulated flue, it's 100 mil. This is the last question of our quiz. Okay. Final question. Drum roll. Okay. Have you drunk all your beer? No, I, I, I drank one Hawkston. Nice. Which was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, and I've drink. <laughs> You've had some milk. I've had some cow juice. Um, I am feeling a little more Jeremy. It's, it's obviously suits me. I might have some more cow juice. <laughs> okay, for your last question. Uh, yeah. What half thickness does a De Geertz Iver 5 require? The Iver 5, they do it... The, the Iver 5, they do a high version and a log store version that's to do with the half. So, 125 mil. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our quiz. My scores are here. And uh, whatever your scores are, put them in the comments. I would love to know. Uh, I, I don't think I necessarily did perfectly. <laughs> um, so, you know, no matter how badly you did, I think, you know, given my job, my score's going to be embarrassing no matter what it is. I haven't, currently, I have no clue what I got. Those are being marked. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you very much, Amy, for my cow juice. You're very welcome. Um, and the Chris, did you enjoy the rest of the Christmas? Yeah, they were good, thank you. Oh, good, excellent. I'm, I'm really glad about that, obviously. Um, happy Christmas, everyone.